everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. Where have we been? I don't really know, but we're back talking about the Premier League for the first time this season. We did do, or we arranged to do a load of videos at the start of the season about uh, who finished where. I think they call it a season prediction, season predictions video, uh, but um, we, we never got around. Life got in the way, as we said. We're here now. Well, there's a, we've, we've got past the disgusting international break. Who thought England would lose 6-0 to Andorra? Me and Thomas did, that's who. But um, we're here, we're both here, as you can see, both coming from new cities, uh, which we might talk about at some point. But um, anyway, yeah, just so if you can hit that like button, that'd be great. I mean, we're just going to change up the theme of this Premier League video a little bit, make it a little bit more conversational rather than doing lots of waffle about every single game. We're just going to talk about the things that interest us more than anything else. And uh, I don't think uh, there is much a better place to start than talking about your beloved Manchester United, Thomas, with a pretty good start to the season. I would say a good start to the season that they've had. And with the signings of uh, Sancho, Varane and big pimp daddy CR7 coming back, you must be absolutely foaming up the trousers ahead of this game. Absolutely buzzing. I cannot believe what I've seen. When all the rumours came out that Ronaldo was going to sign for City, I think I died a little bit inside. We were actually having a pint and you just kept looking at me incredulously being like, but really, really, how do you feel about it? Really, 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 how do you feel? But it, but it was all, but when we were drinking, it was all kind of like, he's going, well, it was all just he's going to City. speculation was he's going to City. It wasn't even speculation at that point, was it? It was like the worst kept secret in football. Ronaldo was going to City, it was going to happen. The only other option would have been for him to go to PSG, which we both know Ronaldo and Messi cannot play together. But you did call it. You said City are never going to sign him because they don't spend money on that sort of player. Yeah, and they don't. And not only that, it's great to know that Ferguson, despite no longer being the Man United manager, is still willing to essentially turn up at an airport and just whisk a player off and be like, you're not signing there, you're signing here. And that, to me, is the entire way Man United should do all of their transfer dealings. I don't care if it's Poland or Cristiano Ronaldo. They're ours and we're getting them. I think when Ferguson dies, if he ever is going to die, um, I think that his ghost will haunt Manchester Airport. <laughs> 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 Dimitar Berbatov's son will be whisked off when he's about to sign for City in a car. No boy, you're signing here. Um, um, no, but look, United look awesome this season. The Southampton draw aside, they've played some pretty good football. Uh, Mason Greenwood clearly looks like a striker, but unfortunately, or fortunately really, we've got Cristiano Ronaldo now starting up front. The guy was top scorer at the Euros. He scored 30 goals last year for Juve. The year before, he was the top scorer in Serie A. He scored something obscene like 100 goals in 130 games in Italy. So quite clearly, goal scoring is not something he's lost. He might be the kind of difference United needed this season to slightly push them over the edge. Unfortunately, we've still got Fred, and I still have to deal with this on a weekly basis watching him. He can't pass the ball. It's just painful. Every time he gets the ball outside the 18-yard box, he goes nuts. But Newcastle, to me, don't look that great this season. They look like a classic Newcastle side that will probably survive just because three teams below them are worse. But like, Steve Bruce, how are you still there? And I don't mean you're bad at your job. I mean, like, literally, why? This cannot be good for your health. No. We were saying this last season, wouldn't we? It's like, just, his family must, at some point, must have to do an intervention. Steve, Steve it just... isn't worth it. It's not going to change. This false promises. It's been like that for a decade. Or more. Uh, I don't even know how long Ashley's been in charge now. It's been a long, long time. 105 years, yeah. Just, just go back to Man United, though, and, and this is just kind of a, a thing of, I'm just going to put up on the screen now what we actually did record as well as our season predictions and where we, we think everyone's going to finish. And I think you can see um, who we have in the top spot. And I just want to know I mean, obviously, that must have just reinforced your belief that, man, you were going to win the league this season. Uh, between that and the first match of the season, the fact we've kept hold of Paul Pogba, I genuinely think United should be able to challenge. The Southampton draw was a bit of what was wrong with Man United last year, where they could not put away chances, and they would just let the game get away from them, and they kind of get bogged down. I think with Ronaldo up front there and Cavani, coming off the bench or being the backup striker. I don't think there's any excuse for them not scoring two or three goals a game now. They've got Bruno. We know Bruno can get the ball into them. We've got Pogba playing really good football. Scott McTominay. Hopefully Pogba can keep 
Fred out of the team, and then you've got this creative force in the center of midfield just doing whatever he wants, giving the ball to Fernandez, who can give it to Cavani, Ronaldo, Rash. Oh my god, I get to say Ronaldo again. How great is this? Oh my god, I'm going to die now on this all season. Ronaldo, Rashford, Greenwood, Jaden Sancho, Martial. Thank god not Dan James, he's gone. They look really strong this season. They should genuinely be in the top two. And to me, it's them and City that are really going to be fighting it out. I know Chelsea are good. I just, just I don't know. There's just something about Chelsea. Like, I feel like Tuchel's going to run them into the ground. But no, no. United are going to win this game. They're going to batter Newcastle. The last time Ronaldo played against this Newcastle side, he got a hat trick. I see more of the same. 4-0 to United. It's hard to argue with that. Um, just a couple of things, right? Like, how damaged did Leeds pay for Dan James? 25 million plus, I believe. Right, that has got to be like the highlight of Man United's transfer window, I think. Convincing a team, and, 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 and we'll get to that in a bit, but a couple of other things, right? Um, just, I, I think that like, obviously Man United have looked good going forward. I've been impressed with like the the desire and the effort of the players as well. They weren't good against Wolves, but they found the when the attackers challenge on the goal, um, intercepts on the goal was amazing. The Hayes double save, Wood up front, they look great. Um, I think it's a great bit of business, not only getting Ronaldo, but also teasing that he's going to go to Man City. So all the Man United fans, including yourself, would have run in and grabbed your old Ronaldo um, paraphernalia, burnt it, and now you have to go out and buy all new stuff. How did you know? It's one. It's a, Beautiful marketing technique for Man Look, they're going to hammer this Newcastle side. The Newcastle just go and enjoy the fact that you can go and watch a quality side play. And um, Man are going to win five. I think it's going to be five nil. I think they're going to absolutely destroy them. Right, Ian, let's move on now to my new city. It's Leeds United versus Liverpool. Leeds have just been hoodwinked into paying £25 million for a player that, whilst quick on the wing, can't defend and is blown off the ball with the lightest of breaths. Coming up against the Liverpool side, who look like they want to challenge the title this year. And they'll be unveiling their new signing, Jordan Henderson. <laughs> um, what, for his three games this season? Only bit of business on deadline day. I think Liverpool fans have gone a bit OTT. I mean, a lot last season was about getting those injured players back. And, but they do look at, they possibly could have done with a bit more up front. I don't think Mane and um, Salah look as, as great. And with Firmino out injured, they could do with a bit more. But we're expecting this game to be good, I think. Tom Liverpool leads, leads don't hold back. We, that we've seen quality games between these two sides last season. Um, leads haven't won a game yet this season, but they look bloody good in every game they play. And, um, and it looks like, Deserved something from the game against Burnley. If they'd lost it, it would have been a travesty. And um, Liverpool side, we're, 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 again, going back to Liverpool. Um, oh, yeah, you're going, to see, you're going to be around and about in Leeds this game. You're going to be taking action shots around Ellen Road with your um, drone. I, I will be in Leeds, but I'm probably going to try and get out of town because it kind of terrifies me how busy it's going to get. <laughs> I want to see action shots, Thomas. Action shots from a grassy knoll. Uh, near Ellen Road. Um, I think I, I think Liverpool win. Uh, I'm going to go for a two-one Liverpool win. I, I think there's just Jota seems to be a bit of a difference maker for them at the moment, and uh, I can see him getting another goal here. And Liverpool just edging it. Jota looks like a great signing, and he fits into this team well. And he probably played better than Firmino, for being honest. Like Firmino is a foil, but Jota actually scores goals. He gets in and around the box. We saw that in the last game. Um, Leeds still look about a step behind where they should be, and I do think that the pace Bielsa has them play at means they almost need more preseason than anyone else just to get up to that insane breakneck pace. You saw it multiple times in the last match, but they're not really able to keep it going for 90 minutes yet. They definitely couldn't keep it going against United. They'd have these random 10, 15 minute bursts, and then everyone would just kind of rip backwards. Uh, they, they won't do this because you get into the Premier League and you have a good season and then it's like, you know, it's a very much a what have you done for me lately kind of game. Leeds fans should just really just enjoy what Bielsa is serving up here because every week's exciting. You're going to go through some bad runs. You're going to go through some amazing runs and just enjoy the ride because it can be a hell of a lot worse, um, as you all know, with 20 odd years in the outside of the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, 
But I'm really excited for this game. I'm excited to live in a city with this sort of football being played in it. I'm petrified of the amount of Liverpool fans that will be in town. And with my big mouth and inability to say anything nice about this club, I'm going to be staying away from that ground. But I'm just going to say it now. This is where Leeds put down their marker and everyone goes, Oh my God, are they a Champions League team this year? 4-3 to Leeds United. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, yeah, I, that one looked on the coupon. That one looked a real mouth-watering tie. But this one should be to rerun of the Charity Shield earlier on in the season. It's Leicester versus Man City. Yeah, Ian, this looks really exciting, and I'm just going to start with Leicester. They got rid of Damari Gray, really quick, exciting, pacey winger who's never been able to like get form going, but then has never really been given four straight games to even start. And they've replaced him with Adam Ola Lookman, another player that cannot get his form going at any point. Like, one minute looks like a world beater, the next minute you're like, why is this guy in my team? What is he doing? And I thought that's a really interesting signing on their part. They brought in some other players like Pat Sandaka, uh, Bubakari Samare, and Ryan Bertrand, who I actually think is actually a decent signing if he can even get half of the form he had at Southampton. Uh, and Yannick Vestergaard's coming at centre back. That's a great move from them. I wanted him to sign at Man United, but we got stuck with Raphael Varane. So, you know, Terrible. tough times. Tough times. Um, Leicester have done what they always do. They've, they've, they've improved a little bit. They've signed players around the fringes. Um, I genuinely think Vestergaard could end up being a coup for them. He looked so good last year, and Southampton kind of fell apart defensively when he wasn't playing. Uh, City, on the other hand, lost a game at the beginning of the season, and everyone wrote that they were completely done. So they decided to follow that up with playing the exact same team and two games and scoring 10 goals and conceding none. So City are definitely not going to win the title, right, Ian? I don't think you can read too much into the game against Arsenal. That was such a just procession. And I think this is a real test for Man City. This really is. And look, they, they were great. They're a phenomenal signing. And Jack Greenish makes them better. And they, but they still didn't sign a striker. They still didn't get a, a person to bang in the goals up front with the Kane deal falling through. And if they were a little bit toothless against Spurs on the opening yeah. day. They had a good start to the game. They should have, they should have scored, but they ended up losing 1-0. They've already lost the nest of 1-0 this season as well. Uh, is this going to be a common thing that then catches up to Man City where the lack of a striker does come back to haunt them a little bit? Um, in, in every year. Every year. Even with Aguero, it's they need a striker. They need a striker. They play no, half they their had, matches. At least they had a striker. They yeah, but last year he played like 13 games for them. They oh, played for and Torres up front. You're exaggerating, exaggerating, exaggerating. He's pro probably the leading goal scorer pretty much every year he was at City. He's looking at the conspiracy, looking this up now. Okay. Look, he's going to be, it's going to be, but Leicester are just such a hard side to play and it is going to be a test. Um, Mate, I, he, he played literally 17 matches for them last year and he only started 12. Last season, yes. But but they, they ran the league last year. This is the same team, plus Jack Grealish, plus a year on with players like Ferran Torres learning their trade, getting better. Like, this City side are going... I'm not saying they're going to win the league. They're an imperious team. Not signing Harry Kane is not adding a cherry I'm on top of the quadruple-decker cake. I'm not saying they're not a great side. I'm just saying that is that going to come back to Auckland a little bit? Um, the answer to that is no. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, well... Um, <laughs> I think I'll, I'll let you lead the way and I'll better just copy what you say. Well, no, I just... City looked like the exact same City side. That Spurs match looked like a, the exact same game you watch City play four or five times every year. They get 25 shots on goal, but for some reason, they just don't look like scoring. Like, they don't look like scoring from start to finish. And then they play two games and bang in 10 goals. And I know what you say about Arsenal it's possession, but like... They still have to score five goals, and they seem to do this like ten times a year. Yeah, they, they play. It's a different level of side where you play these sides down the bottom of the league, and you can. And Arsenal, unfortunately, are there. Not unfortunately, from your point of view, but from my point of view, um, where you can walk the ball into the back of the net. You, they, you're on a pole because you're they're always yeah. waving you through. Whereas Leicester and we saw Spurs under Nuno weren't like that, and it is a bit more of a struggle for them. Um, yeah. And look, I, I, how could, I, I'm not going to be backing against City in this game. I just think it's going to be a test. And I just think this is the sort of game where you could use um, a guy that could, like, be a bit of a coach. Indeed. I'm still going for a City 2-0 victory. What do you think, Ian? 2-1. Uh, 
Right, let's move on to the team that is on everyone's lips. That's right, Aston Villa are traveling to Chelsea. <laughs> the Chelsea is a bit scary, really, aren't they? They, they are a bit of a scary side. It's curious. Um, to, yeah, uh, Lukaku just makes them such a formidable side. Uh, it's such a dangerous striker, but they've got so many... Everybody just looks like they're singing from the same pin sheet. I mean, to go a man down for the whole second half against Liverpool and hold them out pretty comfortably, I would say. They didn't look under too much. And, and quite in, they seem like they quite enjoyed the battle of doing that. It's a Chelsea side that really looks like they know they're going to be serious part of contenders. And I don't think many sides are going to be able to match them. I think Villa will give them a game. But I think Chelsea will... I think it'll be... They, they, I think it'll be a bit like the Arsenal one. Chelsea will win 2-0. Probably one for Lukaku, one for someone else. And it, it will, it will look a closer game than maybe it is. Yeah, I mean, I did this all last year, and I'm pretty sure all the year before. I don't need to state how incredibly good Chelsea are. And you know what? They won the Champions League, and it's the second time they've won the Champions League, and people are almost like apologizing for it happening. Like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, but they got like they're so good. This team is so good. Uh, they're going to be awesome. They're going to be top four this season. Um, I'm afraid Tuchel will run them into the ground, unfortunately. But I will go with the same score as you, unfortunately. 2-0 to the Blues. Change the scores. We've gone for 2-0 Villas. Really glad you're not, you're not, you're not screen grabbing all this in. Get ready to hear something about um, a bean being on fire now, because um, time to talk about two of Tom's favourite sides. Norwich City travel to Highbury and play us. Yeah, I mean, Arsenal are an absolute dumpster fire. We knew this before. They've just proven it with the last couple of games. I, I'm just going to follow the Roy Keane method of this, which is even he feels bad for them and can't be bothered bad-mouthing him. Because, like, sort it out. Your fans deserve better. The club deserves better. It's getting just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to watch. The excuses have been embarrassing for years now. You're better than this. Do fucking better. Norwich, you're not better than this. You're definitely going down. I'm so glad you're back to be here as a whipping boy, because that's all you are in this league. Uh, 1-0 to Norwich? <laughs> <laughs> it is 1-0 to Norwich. I think Arteta's really got to be gone, but I don't think he will. I think they'll keep him on for longer. Um, and it's a game Arsenal really need to win. I looked at the way they played against City and Chelsea, and they were, they're never going to get anything. The way, they're, they're nowhere near getting anything against those sides. I looked at the whole league and I thought, who are Arsenal able to get points off? And I thought, the only team I could think of was Norwich. Really, the only team that I think, and the only, thing, and the only way I say it is, they're, it's because Norwich are quite weak. Every yeah. other side is going to be able to stand up and bully this Arsenal side, whereas Norwich is probably the one side I don't think can. Um, and that's why Arsenal, I think Arsenal will get a win here, which will, um, a bit like the West Brom game, paper over some cracks, but everybody's seen through that these days. 3-1 guns. Yeah, I just, like, honestly, it's, it's just embarrassing. I don't it's, even, I didn't want to make fun of them anymore. It's, it's just embarrassing. embarrassing. It, it, exactly what it is, it is embarrassing. And it is to the point now where if, you, if, you, if you're not a Spurs fan, it's not even that funny to go on about it. But that being said, Ian, top of the table, Tottenham Hotspur, travel to Crystal Palace. Yes, with ex-Guna Patrick Vieira looking to clip Spurs' wings a little bit. But uh, it's been all about 1-0 wins for Spurs, isn't it? They, they, they get the lead, they shut it out, uh, all good. Um, I mean, they, the best bit of business is keeping Kane. Yeah. And the, he'll get his head down now and he'll be back to, back to his best. And Palace just, they got a couple of goals against West Ham, but uh, it's a long process for Vieira to improve that club and the one thing I worry about them is they're not going to have the, the the tactical nous of Roy Hodgson there now to keep them like competitive in games to eke out those 1-0 wins to eke out those 0-0 draws um, and I just I see Palace just really going down in this game uh, and I actually think it might I'm actually going to go Spurs but do get second goal I'm going to go for 2-0 to Tottenham but great start for Spurs um, a lot, everybody thought they'd be a bit of a joke this season, but Nuno's showing what a good manager he is. Yeah, they're going to win 3-0. Nuno's excellent. Uh, Son is excellent. 
campaign is excellent and everything he's assembled behind them can just about get a job done on a day. Uh, they look really well drilled. They look not like Pochettino's Spurs, but they look like they have a real belief and they all know what every player is doing and what they're trying to do. And that's the difference because under Mourinho, up front, you never knew what was happening. He's given Bergvine a run of games. He's come really good. He looks absolutely awesome getting this run. We knew Son and Kane could score the goals. We know their midfield's industrious, but can get the ball around. Palace, I don't know how Patrick Vieira is going to do it. And that's not a knock on Vieira, it's a knock on Palace. That club literally down tools every five games and just sit there. So I worry this will be one of those things because they've got Spurs visiting. They know they're probably not going to win. And they are the sort of team that when they know they're not going to win, rarely get a result. So 3-0. To be good. With Nuno, you kind of get the uh, you, you get the kind of solidness that you get from Mourinho, but without the fireworks. Exactly, a hundred. You get exactly that. Very good players. Plus, I mean, Nuno got the best out of Adama Traore and Jimenez and created this awesome twosome up front. He's now got three players up there, and they're connecting the same way you saw Traore and Jimenez connect, where they all know where each other is, they're all trusting each other, and they're just like one mind to drive forward. Just want to give a really quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. We have paused it, but we love all of you. Thank you for supporting us. If you guys are interested in this channel, please consider subscribing to our Patreon. It is what keeps us going. We are going to go to a lot of matches this year, and any money you do send us through Patreon will be going towards that. But really, get down to Grandstand Betters. They've been our partner for over two years now. They do fantastic tips. Sometimes Ian gets on a video with them. Sometimes both of us get on a video with them. We've done a lot of collabs. And uh, yeah, check them out. They're absolutely awesome. And I just want to say one thing. This, he, Matt started doing live streams of Cleveland Brown games. Oh, nice. Um, I, I saw the first one. I was on Sunday and obviously it was Bank Holiday, so I stayed up. Fantastic. Really good. Um, so if you like the American football, go and check those live streams out. And now it's time for King Ralph Southampton to take on West Ham United. Been a great start for West Ham. Um, Southampton remain quite a tricky side to play against and also predict their game. So you, you, they are a bit of the proverbial box of chocolates. But um, it, it's, I, I think West Ham, I think West Ham will go there and get a result here. I, I think it's going to be, I, I'm going to go for a three-one West Ham win. Yeah, Hammers look really good this season. Southampton look exactly like what you'd expect, but especially without Vestergaard and without Ings, they look like a slightly different team. I'm going to go 2 nils to the Hammers, and I bet Antonio gets a goal because he's on fire right now. Did you like his celebration? <laughs> I really like the one where he has the cardboard cut out of himself. That's the That's best. That's what I meant. I think that oh, was yeah, okay. the celebration. Yeah. I know we did the chicken dance, but I was kind of talking about the... Uh... When you used to lift, it reminded me when you used to lift me up like that, Tom. Uh, years ago, when we were young and madly in love. When I fit in a leotard. That was a look. Brentford versus Brighton and Hope. And what I love about this Brighton team, and I'm sorry, this is just my standard rant when Brighton are on, is how much the BBC and the media love them. They won two games and everyone went nuts. Have Brighton figured it out? They're like, no! They have no striker. They've signed like no one over the break. Nothing has changed at this club to make you think they've figured it out. But the media will convince you that this is a fantastic team that is getting unlucky or something. I'm not sure. Uh, Brentford, really happy to have them in the league. They probably won't survive, but they're good fun. They're actually going for it. And like everyone else, they have beaten Arsenal this season. So, 2-1 to the Bees. Very good, very good. The Bees versus the Seagulls. Uh, I, I think I'm going to match the score though. I think the good, the good times at Brentford's new ground will roll on. It was a fantastic atmosphere when they beat Arsenal. I think they'll get that. I think they'll that will hold them in good stead against this Brighton. Right, I, I have no my my opinion on Brighton always comes from you. I have really no opinion about them. What I love about them is the fact that you seem to love and hate them in equal measure. It is such a kind of like a weird dynamic you have around that football club. Um, I don't mind them. I don't mind Potter. I think they're all right. And but I just I I, I think like most people I'd like to see Brentford carry on their good form. Agreed. And now, oh God. Everton versus Burnley. He's done it, Thomas. He's won over the hearts and minds of all the Evertonians, and they finally believe now. Rafa Benitez, all that Liverpool stuff behind him, 
Um, and uh, they're coming up against Daish's nuggety Burnley side who managed to get, I think, their first point of the season, was it? And maybe the second yeah. in the draw against Leeds. But I think Everton are going to be too strong for them here, although you never know with Burnley. I'm going to go for a 2 0 Everton. Yeah, the one thing about Everton is Damari Gray is there. He's starting what looks like most of the games, and he looks awesome. He looks like the player he had flashes of at Leicester, and I really hope that they play him because he has always been one of those players that you think could be kind of special and has just never quite gotten the run for whatever reason it is. Uh, Burnley have not impressed me yet this season. I was actually on a train with a bunch of Burnley supporters off the Liverpool game. They were talking about how much better they were than Liverpool, so your fans have kind of annoyed me as well, Burnley, because they're quite you clearly... You, you weren't. <laughs> Just going to say that, Burnley fans. You weren't. No. But you are negative. We love Sean Dyche. We always like having you in the league. You play to your strengths, but you also, when you get the chance, do play football. But you're going to lose this one 2-1 to Everton. And finally, let's not call it a main event. Not even close, sir. Watford versus Wolves, Tom. Yeah, Watford looked like garbage. Wolves have had something like 75 shots on goal in three games and not scored a goal yet. It's everything that could go wrong for Wolves has. They're going to come right. They're going to survive the year somehow, but they're not looking great. Wolves, 1-0. Yeah, I think a Wolves 1-0 win as well. And I know we haven't gone for any draws, so I'm going to go for a draw, actually, 1-1. Um, it's, they, I think they've lost every game so far, Wolves, by a goal since nil. And I thought they'd look quite good against Man United, just the lack of... Lack, lack of cutting edge. I think when Jimenez gets back looking sharp again, they'll be fine. And Troy yeah. always just got no end products, but he is exciting to watch. And um, Watford, I think they'll be a sort of side that's pretty good at home, pretty crappy away. And um, But with no Troy Deeney, I don't really have a lot of interest in them. One, one. Without Troy the boy, you got no chance. Thank you all for watching. Please remember, go over to Grandstand Betters, check out our Patreon, hit like, hit subscribe, comment below, and give us as much abuse as you can. We don't care how many bad words we, you use. We will put it below. See you next week.